I started to feel really uncomfortable in my body. I didn't really look at food through a health lens. That was kind of my first experience, I guess, with disordered eating. My belief at the time was that running and cardio was the best form of exercise for weight loss. Realizing how fragile health can be and how important it is in terms of your quality of life. And I just really fell in love with feeling strong after feeling weak for such a long period of time. Hey, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. I have woken up very talkative and full of energy today, so I thought it'd be a perfect day to do a full discussion about my health journey. So where I've come from in terms of my fitness and my health, challenges I've had along the way, lessons and mistakes that I've made that I thought I would share with you. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So let's start off taking it right to the very beginning where I first kind of really became really interested in health. So this was probably in about year eight when I was 14 to 15 years old. And before then, growing up, my mum and dad were always really promoted a healthy lifestyle, didn't really get us takeaway much, always cooked from home and would always try and explain with things like um, Cocoa Pops and just like all those other um, type of breakfast cereals and all the things that are really high in sugar, she would always be like, you know, that doesn't really have a lot of nutritional value as a kid. You're sort of like, what does that even mean? Like it doesn't really matter much to you because all you sort of really care about is how things taste. I didn't really look at food through a health lens. I sort of just liked things based on taste and all the rest of it. I've always been a massive sweet tooth, so always loved chocolate and lollies and all the rest of it. Yeah, so year eight became a bit more conscious of health because I started to feel really uncomfortable in my body and I guess at the time I kind of just jumped onto social media and sort of wasn't aware of the impact the digital environment had on me and I it's really hard to remember what kind of accounts that I followed but I do remember following a couple of fitness accounts and just kind of being exposed to a wider variety of bodies um, outside of what I was used to seeing within my high school environment and my home environment I suppose. So yeah I start to feel really uncomfortable in my body I just felt really big and I was just really self-conscious of my shape. Um, keeping in mind I was never a, a big or overweight person I was I think maybe at that stage probably the same weight I am now I look completely different now but in terms of my weight it probably was the same my composition is just completely different I just felt very self-conscious of my shape I have always held a lot of my body weight and my body fat on my lower body so around my hips and my butt and my thighs and I remember feeling so uncomfortable having a bigger butt and like these days it's like probably one of my favorite features of my body to be honest um but yeah that's just where i held most of my body weight and i really, really hated that and i always just thought that really tall lean girls with the slim legs and everything was just the perfect body and i just remember wishing that i was really really lean and i just really really wanted to be skinny I guess so that's kind of where I started becoming aware of body shapes and all the rest of it and that's kind of the body shape that I idolized or previously all through primary school I wasn't like incredibly active I didn't really love exercise that much I did play netball I stopped when I got to high school and actually didn't move much at all for all of you seven and eight I was pretty sedentary so I remember New Year's Eve at the end of year eight I went crazy on all the food just like one or two eat all a bunch of different things and um, even though I wasn't exactly aware of this behavior at the time I was binge eating I just had no idea what that was and because I had in my head I'm going to make myself satisfied on all these things now because come January the 1st of next year I'm cutting all of this out I'm going to re-emerge as like the healthiest version of me I'm going to go get my dream body I'm going to completely overhaul my lifestyle and all those things that I was binging on didn't have a place in that yeah that was kind of my first experience I guess with disordered eating even though I didn't really realize it at the time I was just Already I had put myself into a restrictive mindset before I had even acted on it. So yeah, so on the 1st of January, I remember I weighed myself that night and I was 56 kilos and I was like, see, I'm not going to see this number again because I'm losing all this weight. Um, I'll actually 
put a photo if I can find one of what I looked like at the time so you can see that I wasn't actually in that bad of a spot to begin with um, that was just the real start of my body dysmorphia. 1st of January decided I was going to start running my belief at the time was that running and cardio was the best form of exercise for weight loss and it really depends on what your goals are and to be honest any form of energy expenditure is beneficial for weight loss depending on what your goal is um, and I actually really did enjoy it. I was really not fit at the start and it was a bit of a struggle. Um, and I really got into it because my dad at the same time was really into his running. He was on a bit of a weight loss journey himself and I was really inspired by the progress that he was making. And it just was easier to start running because I would always go with him until I managed to build the habit and build the skill to be able to do it for a longer distance and became motivated to do it on my own. So during the first um, couple of months of that year, of year nine, I did drop weight quite quickly and I was feeling pretty good and like all those habits and things I was changing, I was changing for the better because I wanted to feel better, I wanted to feel more confident. So at that stage it wasn't a bad thing, I was making a lot of healthy improvements in my life. My diet at that point, again from a lack of knowledge, I just didn't. I did what I did with what I knew at the time. Um, my diet still wasn't that great. Um, I remember my dad saying to me, you know, if you're doing all this exercise, you can eat whatever you want and you'll be fine. And 14 or 15 year old me took that very literally um, to think that I could literally um, out train a bad diet, which I know now is not quite the case. I remember I would come home for a run and literally instead of having water, I'd have Pepsi Max. My nutritionist brain studying nutrition science now, that hurts thinking about it to be honest. Like I can't believe I thought that was okay I can't believe it, but again, <laughs> our family meals were always very healthy. So my dinners, my lunches and stuff are always cooked from home and everything. So very, very grateful for the upbringing I had for that reason. Um, just my choices in between that were up to me weren't that good. My weight loss sort of plateaued. I sort of got to a point where I was sort of just chilling and I wasn't really moving. I was like active enough, definitely active enough with all the running I was doing. I was getting a lot fitter. I started building up to being able to do 5K, which I could not do now. Running is not really my forte anymore. I really enjoyed the motion of it and being able to put headphones in, getting into that rhythm of matching up my pace to my breathing. It was just a really great mindful activity and I still think it's really, really fantastic. Um, it's just not my main focus at the moment. Yeah, so once I got to a point where my weight loss was slowing and I still, I felt better, but I still didn't really feel confident in my body shape. I wasn't really happy with the way my body looked. I didn't having to choose clothes to go out in on the weekend. I just didn't feel good in anything. So yeah, I just wasn't, still wasn't in a good place. So um, as weight loss is my goal, I understood that in order to lose weight, I needed to eat less than the energy I was expending. So I thought that was my goal at the time. Um, from a lack of education, I didn't realize that what my goal really should have been was body recomposition, which I'll get into later. In my head, I had it that the less I ate, the better. So once I looked at what I was already doing and I thought I'm still not feeling happy in my body, there's something else that needs to change. My next option was to look at my food intake. I did start to clean up what I was eating a lot um, and I restricted and took a lot of things out and I also restricted just my overall energy intake. So at this point, I remember sitting at around 52 kilos, which is lighter than what I am now. Um, and I started to restrict my food intake very, very gradually. So I had breakfast in the morning before school and then I just stopped snacking during the day. I would have my lunch meal and then um, dinner at nighttime. Um, and I did feel hungry during that time as well. Um, this year, this was a year I started doing kickboxing as well. And I loved that so much. It was so empowering learning defense skills and also feeling strong as well, doing some resistance type training because all I was doing was cardio stuff. So really, really loved kickboxing. That had a massive um, impact on my exercise behavior and my relationship with fitness all through high school, which I'll touch on later as well. So I started looking at my food intake and decided that I needed to decrease it in order to achieve my weight loss goal, which at that point was just to lose as much as I could. I wanted to get down to 50 kilos. And then once I reached 50 kilos, I realized I still wasn't that happy or that confident. So then I set my new goal, which was 48 kilos. In my head, I knew that it wasn't the best thing to do. I knew it wasn't healthy, 
but because I was so fixated on this physical appearance goal, I was willing to compromise my health in order to achieve it. And that's kind of where the problem lies. So yeah, I went a couple of months of not taking any food to school at all. I weighed myself every single morning. I would get up and check my weight. It was like the most important part of the day for me because it would dictate whether I was gonna be really happy and feel accomplished or if I was gonna be absolutely miserable. By seeing that um, number decrease, even if it was by 100 grams, which in the scale of things, for what I know now, is not even that significant, um, that would make me so happy because it was a decrease. I was lighter than the day before. If it went up, I would feel like a failure, I would feel really miserable and that I wasn't strong enough to do this and I wasn't getting myself any closer to my goal. I remember going um, from 50 to 48. Once I reached 48, I decided I wanted to be 47, got to 47 still wasn't happy at 47 so I wanted to be 45 and then I got to 45 and it was kind of like to what end the more I kept going the less happier I was so it didn't matter how much I was losing I wasn't gaining any happiness or any self-acceptance by doing this so at my lowest point I was 45 kilos which for my frame was very very small um, at that point I was so lethargic I was pretty much a walking zombie I barely had the energy to get through a school day wasn't really focused at school and I was a pretty studious person I had no energy to do kickboxing so even as much as I loved it there was a period of time where I completely withdrew from that my cardiovascular fitness was really really good it was absolutely peaking I was running 5k I was really, really fit but I would literally come back from a run and just collapse the rest of the day I would just be dead have no energy and I just had no confidence in my body I just felt like no matter what I did having the perfect body was just some massive secret and whatever it was I just was never going to learn the trick to it I was very very scared of food all the time food consumed every single thought of my day from the moment I woke up I would have something in the morning and then all I'd be thinking about is what I was going to eat next and because I was so restrictive, all I could think about was just avoiding as much as I could and stressing about how many calories was in this. So just extremely food focused to the point where it was just, yeah, it completely ran my life at that point. And I remember going on a family holiday to, oh, what was it called? To Noosa in Queensland. And I absolutely loved it. And that was kind of at the leanest I'd ever been. And I remember... Um, I'll put a photo here of what it looked like at the time. Um, that was definitely my smallest point. I just remember feeling fat on that holiday. Like, yeah, that just goes to show the extent that the body dysmorphia really just gripped me. All I could see was my flaws. I couldn't really see my situation for exactly what it was. So shortly after that holiday, I had a family member diagnosed with a pretty serious illness. And I guess watching their health deteriorate so rapidly is what really introduced that concept of quality of life for the first time. So all the things that they previously enjoyed doing, they couldn't do any of it because they were just so sick and spent so much time in hospital. And that's kind of when I really realized that our body is a vessel through life that allows us to deliver value to the people around us. And the real enjoyment comes from the things we do and the connections and the interactions we have and none of that really has anything to do with how we look or how we're presented to the world yeah, i guess seeing someone um realizing how fragile health can be and how important it is in terms of your quality of life really brought into perspective exactly the impact of what i was doing on my own health and as much as i don't want to seem like i benefited from this person's situation because i would do anything for them to not have gone through that. Sometimes you just learn the biggest lessons through some of the most crap situations in life. So that was kind of the first little wake up call that I had that something needed to change. And I just remember being so mentally, physically, emotionally, just so drained and exhausted. And I just, I just didn't want to continue on like that. Like I just, I needed something to change. At the time as well, I had my best friend was going through very, very similar issues and similar patterns to what I was and I guess seeing her so miserable all the time and just really struggling with her own health and her body image when I thought she was just absolutely incredible um, I sort of took it upon myself to write a bit of a list on things that would help improve her health and yeah so I literally remember writing this list I listed things such as getting enough sleep eating enough vegetables having a good water intake and after I wrote it I was sort of like 
holy crap, I'm not even doing any of this for myself. And that was kind of when I fully could understand I do know what it is I need to do. I'm just not being kind enough to myself in order to do that. And that's why that quote, talk to yourself like you would to your best friend, that's why that resonates with me so much. As cliche as it is and as overused as it is, I know, um, I lived it. So yeah, be nice to yourself like you would to your best friend. It really goes a long way. So slowly but surely, I started to increase my food intake again. I started just to be really intuitive and I decided I was going to start honoring my body's cues. I was going to start eating more, eating when I was hungry, eating the most nutritious foods to the best of my knowledge at the time. So it was a very, very long process. It definitely wasn't, I went to sleep one night and I was able to eat back on my energy requirements. It was not like that at all. It was a very, very emotionally painful process of increasing my food intake. I really struggled with the idea because I was so adamant in my head that in order to reach my goal, I needed to eat less. And I was kind of actively contradicting that every day by eating more. And I did struggle with binge eating a lot during that time as well. When I allowed myself to have something, I very much gone to the all or nothing mindset. So if I allowed myself to have something, I wasn't very good at moderating my intake because I'd gone without it for so long. I used to um, binge eat on dark chocolate quite a bit. Um, so that's why I am not a big fan of food labels such as junk food, treat food, clean eating, cheap meals and all the rest of it because it really creates these un really unnecessary emotional attachments to food um, and really isn't an accurate depiction of their nutrient and energy density. I just really struggled to find a sense of balance in my life. It was either all or nothing. Um, for me, even though I was eating enough at that point, I just still wasn't very confident in my body and in my shape at all. I still hadn't really found that sweet spot. And to be honest, I was at a point where I thought I never would. So this is where weight training came in and absolutely changed the game for me. So in year 12, I picked up weights for the first time. I actually bought an ebook um, by Tammy Hembro, which I know influencers um, over Instagram selling fitness programs and things like that get a pretty bad rap. I don't regret doing that because I found that program really fantastic for really developing routine and structure because yeah before then I didn't really know how to weight train and it was an at-home program that allowed me just to use the equipment that I had on hand which was a couple of dumbbells so I just fell in a really good routine with completing that and I just really really loved it and that's kind of where I noticed a lot of progress and a lot of changes in my body that running didn't give me and I just really fell in love with feeling strong after feeling weak for such a long period of time and I really loved being able to build my shape um, instead of being so focused on losing it. So yeah, all during year 12 I just repeated that ebook. I really, really loved it and I feel like just for year 12 because it is such a stressful and a strenuous year, having that as an outlet for my stress was so incredibly beneficial. Um, I did that in conjunction with kickboxing as well. Kickboxing played a massive role in my stress management during year 12. After high school, when I left and went to uni, I did decide to study nutrition science at Deakin University. This kind of stemmed from, I was a bit lost for a year, not really sure what I wanted to do or what kind of path I wanted to go down. And I just was so confused by nutrition um, and I just wanted to understand everything about it. In my head, I just thought the more I understood it and the more I knew about it, the less I would fear food. And I thought I'd actually be able to create that balance and that healthy lifestyle that I was so desperately seeking. After year 12, I really wanted to take this weight training thing a lot further. I wanted to expand and actually go into a gym for the first time because gyms were an environment I really dabbled in at all until that point. I was just so excited to use all this different equipment. I moved on from the at-home booty program, which I was doing all through year 12, and I bought one of her gym programs. Again, I really, really loved the structure and it gave me the tools that I needed to really implement routine and it was just a really great way to sort of um, to have confidence in the gym because I feel like the main struggle with starting at a gym is just feeling lost and not really knowing how to use equipment, not really knowing what to do. So having that ebook gave me a lot of confidence because it had rough steps on how to use equipment so I could kind of replicate it. I probably can almost guarantee that I was not doing it correctly. I have come such a long way in terms of my form across all different exercises that I do, but everyone starts somewhere. So yeah, it was a really great tool to give me that structure and really allowed me to develop that routine and consistency that has really compounded my results over the last couple of years. 
So after about a year of being in the gym and using ebooks um, to guide my workouts, I decided to sort of experiment on my on my own and sort of try writing my own um, workouts to do. Um, wanted to experiment with, experiment with my own programming based on the goals that I wanted to achieve. Um, so I was wanting to hit some really big lifts like on my squat and my deadlift and things as well. For the first year of gym, I pretty much only did lower body. I didn't really touch upper body very much and I was very inconsistent with it. So I didn't really make a lot of improvements in terms of my upper body strength. And it was sort of getting to a point where I was limiting my ability to progress on my lower body by not being strong enough in my upper body. When I wanted to take my programming into my own hands, I really wanted to put a bit more focus on my upper body because it was very um, important in terms of my body composition to make sure it was even. Because at that point I was becoming a little bit out of proportion because all of my time and energy was going onto my legs. I was very, very consistent with that, but then I was barely doing anything for my upper body. And I feel like that is such a common thing, especially amongst women, um, to happen. And even in the reverse for men, I feel like um, boys can go in wanting to work on the upper body, but then neglect their legs a little bit more. So it's really important when programming to have a nice balance of the two, um, just to make sure um, in terms of your composition, you're still in proportion. So last year, after spending about two or nearly three years in the gym, I started to develop really bad hip pain, um, really right in the joints. So there were a couple of exercises that were really, really painful for me, doing a barbell squat. So being in that deep squat position was particularly painful. There was another machine at gym, I'm trying to remember what it's called. I think it's called an abduction machine, um, but it's basically where you're sitting on the seat and you're moving your legs. So the pads are on the outside of your knees and you're pushing the weight out that way. That was excruciating on my hip joint. Um, that did not feel good at all. It was just getting to a point where I would feel my hips would ache when I would walk and the joint would just feel really um, irritated all the time. So I thought the issue was my flexibility. I thought I didn't really stretch that much and I wasn't very consistent with my stretching. So I tried that for a couple of months of being really consistent with that to try and relieve the pain. And if anything, it was only making it worse. As time went on, the less I thought it was a muscular issue and the more I thought it actually felt like it had something to do with the bone, like something to do with the joint. And at that point I was like, I kind of, this is really out of my hands. I don't know what else to do for this. Nothing that I've tried is working. Um, I really need some professional help. So after feeling absolutely spoiled for choice of the amount of PTs at my gym, I contacted Jared Brown at Evolve Performance Method. Also very experienced with hip rehabilitation because he had experienced the exact same thing in his youth. Um, I felt I was in very good hands and within pretty much within a week I had a significant reduction in my pain which was absolutely fantastic and yeah started coaching with him and he took me through um, PT sessions once a week and sort of everything that I thought I knew about form I realized I didn't know um, enough about form. I sort of wish that I had done personal training from the very start of entering in the gym because doing it um, or thinking that you know how to do certain exercises and then having to change your form later on can often be harder than starting. At this point, I started starting my Cert 3 in 4 in personal training because I just really loved the space and I sort of, sort of just wanted to stay in the nutrition lane, but I just sort of thought nutrition and fitness are two parts of the same equation, so it kind of makes sense to do them both. Being within the EPM crew and being mentored by Jared with all my form and teaching me how to do exercises correctly, I was just soaking all of it up and I just loved it so much um, having that hands-on experience as well as studying it online. And so all of this has sort of brought me to the point where I am at today, which is very, very balanced with my eating. I'm very, very intuitive. I feel very at peace with my body image. I don't really suffer from body dysmorphia anymore. I sort of can see my body for what it is. And I'm very, very confident in my body shape, which is something I never thought I would be able to say. Having come from absolutely hating my body shape to actually feeling really, really good in it for the first time. 
and I would say the last three years I've actually felt really, really confident in my body shape, which is really cool. I don't move my body out of punishment or for hate of how I look. I now move it because I really enjoy the form of movement. I know it's really beneficial for my stress and I do notice a massive improvement in my mood and it's just one of my favorite things to do. So it now comes from a place of love because I'm looking after myself. So if you are currently in high school in your teenage years and you genuinely think your goal is fat loss, let me tell you, I would not recommend any teenager or person in high school to lose weight unless you have been told by a health professional that you need to lose weight for health reasons. That's not me saying to do nothing about it, especially if you're feeling unhappy and unhealthy in your current body. Instead, I encourage you to shift your focus from fat loss to body recomposition. What we're really seeking is to change our body shape through muscle development, which in most cases actually requires us to eat more than we currently are, not less. And especially in your teenage years, you were going through so many changes that are so physically demanding. You really, really need that energy, especially for girls that are taking into account your cycles. You really, really do need to make sure that you are eating an adequate amount of energy so you're meeting all those micronutrient requirements. So during this time in lockdown, I have transitioned into a coaching career. Um, using my um, fitness certificates as well as my knowledge in that I've gained in my nutrition degree and I've started working for EPM as their female coach and as part of that I run Beyond Your Body alongside Jared and we have a group of girls in there right now and it's just honestly such a highlight of my day. I really, really love creating the content for it. I really, really love it, sharing all the lessons and mistakes that I've made on the way and helping them feel their best and just really build the healthiest relationship with themselves as possible. So the bulk of Beyond Your Body is basically everything that I wish I knew at the time when I was at my lowest point. So with that being said, if you are interested in Beyond Your Body, please send me a message. I would really, really love to hear from you. Um, I will link below all the information and the application form if you'd like to apply to work with me. Um, yeah, I'd really, really love to hear from you. But otherwise, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something, found it really insightful. And I hope it's really made you reevaluate the way you're approaching your own health. At the end of the day, health is an incredibly individualized process. Health looks different on everyone. What works for one person is not going to be the same for you. And at the end of the day, it's all about improving your quality of life. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, um, subscribe if you would like as well. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later.